This is Our View, the voice of Washington's working families. Seven years without a pay raise, finally a 4.8% raise spread over two years is negotiated and the state senate is stalling and won't pass the budget. Thousands of federation members from across the state took to the street in a unity break to tell the legislature to get their job done. Our voices need to be heard. We, we work in this um, in this area because we want to help children, we want to keep kids safe. It takes a team to keep children safe and we want to be able to be fully staffed, have all the things that we need to be able to keep the children safe that are in our care. We do our best to help children, but when you're on overload, it's really hard to stay on top of all the little safety issues that go on, and that's what brought me out here. We need the funding so that we can get more positions and hire more workers. You know, when it comes down to it, uh, this is more than just a funding raises issue. It's more than a health care issue. This is a moral issue. When we talk about children with our legislatures in our communities, we talk about them being the future. We talk about taking care of them, teaching them, and funding them so the world's a better place. And the fact of it is, is what we've done for years is when it comes down to pain to see that ideal come to life, we don't. We're underfunded. We're not able to serve the community in a way that is actually keeping children safe in the best way possible. Um, we have so much burnout because we have way too many kids and not enough social workers. So unless we get some raises, pay raises, honestly people go somewhere else and we need those pay raises to keep people in those positions also. I feel like our voices need to be heard and legislators need to know really what it's about and how the lack of funding is affecting the services they tell us we have to do and what we want to do, but we're not able to meet those because of understaffing and being underpaid. And then on a, on a personal level, for my family with two kids, it would be nice to have an income that supports my family, that we're not living paycheck to paycheck or you know struggling financially just to make ends meet. It would be nice to be able to be paid what we are worth. But I've already been up to Olympia and I've already had my say with a couple legislatures and I really want to refresh their memory that we need this funding. We don't care for our children financially the way we talk about them ideally. And people came out here today to let it be known that we need to put our money where our heart is. The fact of it is, is if they're not going to fund our contracts, we're going to have to step up our game as a union and we're going to have to unify and let people know that we will not stand for a legislature and a Senate that does not believe in the ideals of our communities and our children. Federation members at Western State Hospital recently gathered to acknowledge the fact that their colleagues have been injured at a high rate during the past year. It was Workers' Memorial Day. We're here again this year uh, to acknowledge uh, those who have fallen on duty, those who have been injured or assaulted on duty. Behind me, just to my right, represents uh, 289 assaults just here at Western State Hospital. On this Workers' Memorial Day, we call for an end to the unnecessary deaths of our brothers and sisters and job hazards that kill and maim. On this day, we call for workers to have the right to speak out and demand safe working conditions and the right to form a union without fear of retaliation. 
I have something here in my hand, and it really reflected what I could not believe for so many years here at Western State. With all the assaults that have been occurring here for decades, for decades, mind you, that this work site had never been brought under any kind of citation by Labor and Industries, a state agency, mind you. And it was of great interest to me that on July 21st, 2014, you know, 10 years too late, frankly, that the department initiated an inspection at the employer's work site at 9601 Stillicum Boulevard. And as a result of that inspection, the department issued citation and notice of assessment to the employer alleging serious violation of the Washington State Industrial Safety and Health Act. The pay for psychologists is significantly lower than that in the private sector. It is becoming significantly harder to attract and retain psychologists who are qualified for the position. Um, I know that we have at least two open positions that we have been advertising for, that we have not been able to recruit people for, and the positions themselves are dangerous in terms of the folks that we're around all the time, uh, patient-wise. And it's time that we start fighting and we start making our voices heard and we make sure that every day that you come to work that you know you're going to have the staffing to be safe, to perform your jobs, and to make sure that our citizens who are being treated here receive the best treatment that they can get. You just try to deliver that daily I know all of you care deeply about the work that you do here, and I want you to be safe. So stand up together, stand up and fight for your rights, stand up and fight for safety, because people are trying to take that away from you. Our state's tax system is now so out of date with the times that more and more of the burden is falling on those in the lower income brackets. It needs reform. A coalition called Washington United for Fair Revenue sent a representative from each of the state's 49 legislative districts to tell the story. Federation members were included. I work for an agency that cares for the most beautiful state parks in the nation. But the agency cannot be fully self-supporting. The Discover Pass revenue and other fee-based activities have proven not to be enough to keep our park system healthy and sustainable. As it stands today, the park system is in decline and struggling to meet its mission. Washington State Parks contribute more than one billion per year to state and local economies. Our state parks create jobs, and as parks start to deteriorate and disappear, so too will the economic benefits in our local communities. These state parks are our state's crown jewels, and the foundation of the park system is in your hands. Make it solid. Make it something we can build on for the next 100 years. I urge you to pass a budget that adopts fair revenue solutions like those in House Bill 2224. Thank you. I have petitions here signed by my fellow citizens from the 42nd urging you to support House Bill 2224, Fair Revenue Solutions for Washington State. My family is comprised of a contractor, a state worker, and two teenage kids. Uh, our effective tax rate is much higher than the tax rate of those large corporations and uh, wealthy in the state. Uh, we struggle to the point of doing without medical and dental care and college for our kids seems like a dream. You have the opportunity now to support House Bill 2224 to ensure fair taxation for all in our state. By reducing tax breaks for large corporations, you'll ease the burden on hardworking lower and middle class families while sustainably funding education and essential state services. I urge you to support House Bill 2224. Thank you. I get to be the last to vilify the fat cats for not paying their fair share of taxes, but in my defense, you haven't actually asked us to. I'm Steve Rubenstein, I live in the first district, and I'm a two percenter, maybe three, and I'm asking you to raise my taxes by implementing a capital gains tax. <clears throat> my wife and I are fortunate we actually have pre-IPO options in her now public company. While we don't really look forward to the eventual six-figure tax bill to Uncle Sam, we're actually willing to share uh, that nice payday with Uncle George. 
if it actually is going to mean that education is finally fully funded and that it and not actually at the expense of cutting vital social services. But I'd like to actually to address the elephant in the room and the donkey. When you get reelected, if you actually vote to tax us, you know, the truth is the tech industry, we're not a bunch of cynics who all believe that government's a waste of money. The fact is we actually owe all of our money and success to a government created internet and to public education. Many of us actually benefited from the social safety net as children. So paying more in taxes is gonna help a whole lot of people a lot more than it's gonna hurt us. But so if you actually step up and solve a real problem that impacts us, namely public education and raising, you know, creating a highly educated workforce, we're going to respect that and we're going to support you. So please support 2224. And the challenge we face isn't to raise taxes or to lower taxes, it's to make the system fair and just and responsible and modern to a 21st century community. So thank you so much for your passion and your energy around being here, making this effort and acknowledging that if you are low income in our state, you pay about 17% in taxes. If you're middle class, you pay about 9%, which is close to the national average. But if you're low, I mean, if you're super, super wealthy, you pay less than two and a half percent combined level of all state and local taxes. We're better than this as a state. We can build a fairer system that's more responsive to public education. Thank you so much for your efforts today. This has been Our View, brought to you by the proud members of the Washington Federation of State Employees. We remind you. When you accept a paycheck for your hard work, you don't give up your rights. Thank you, and we'll see you next month. Public service is very important. Where I work at LNI, worker safety is paramount. We are losing our inspectors uh, routinely because they're not paid enough. Private sector is recruiting them. We need to have the best quality uh, inspectors to prevent injuries. It's, um, it's very important, and it's not just LNI. State Patrol are losing state troopers to higher paying jobs. It's going to be difficult to keep Washington safe and working if we don't have uh, employees paid well enough. I think uh, there's so much government, people get confused. What's the Department of Health do for me? What is LNI? So we probably do need to educate the public more so they know what we each, each of us do, and our legislators, they need to know and appreciate what we do and support it. I'm a certified medical interpreter and I um, help uh, DSHS um, and Medicaid patients who don't speak English um, to understand what is going on with their health. And I see every day how important my service is and they do as well because when I'm not there, they don't understand what's going on. And almost every, every appointment that I go to, patients thank me for being there. We serve a really big population, no matter what language um, you're thinking of, and um, I think that it's a really important job and it's important for legislators to learn more about what we do and help, help support us and help support their constituents through us.